step into a dojo, you're stepping into um, kind of like a classroom setting, but it's physical. It's not sitting at a desk. It's, it's mentally challenging, but you're using your body, your mind, you're developing your character. All these things are challenged when you're training. You get there, you smell the fresh mountain air, you can, uh, you can feel the cold of the glacier water just standing at this river shore. Like you can feel the cold air coming off of it. It's just, it's like nothing. It's like nowhere I've ever been before in my life. It's, it's home. It's more home there than anywhere else. You have really nice big exposure to the sun and it's so bright out and warm all the time. And you don't have to hike a million hours to get there. It's really beautiful here. You don't understand. When you get there, it's like, oh. You can drop all your gear and relax and go run and look at all the climbs, and it's really exciting, especially when you're coming into a new place. The sacred space of triathlon is, is kind of unique. It's almost the environment of moving from one to another, quickly adapting to getting the feel of the water, getting the feel of the, of the bike so it feels like an extension of you. Uh, getting the feel of, of running when you come off the bike. When you do something every day, and it's all you do in your sport, you develop this kind of, you know, really close friendship with that one environment, that one sacred space. I'm Amy Sutley, and I'm a rock climber. Bouldering is climbing without ropes, and it allows you to focus on the hardest moves, and you don't have to be focusing on your gear and your belayer and all that kind of stuff. I think everyone deals with failure in different ways. <laughs> you okay? Are you good? Did you bring your back? Do you want to try again? Are you okay? Personally, my reaction doesn't last very long. I usually get frustrated for a couple minutes and then I think, okay, well, that was just one climb. Sorry. <laughs> it's just so hard. <laughs> I think the best way to deal with it is just to move on because if you dwell on your mistakes, it's easy to let that frustration carry on into your next climb. My name is Stephen Robinson. I'm a triathlete. I love the sport of triathlon. Well, I worked for the city of Calgary for 28 years. I was a building inspector for most of that. Started out as a carpenter, but I've been retired for the last two years. I'm a deacon in the Roman Catholic Church, so I do a lot of work in the church. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Riding, being out in this place. All colors are starting to look awesome. The triathlete is dealing with is trying to battle all the time uh, focus. Focus comes into play at every aspect of a triathlon. Always thinking ahead. What am I going to have to do when I'm in transition? How am I going to most smoothly change from one sport to the other? In cycling races, Accidents happen not on the tricky parts, not on the corners, although they can. They happen when people are in long stretches where there's a pack and there is nothing happening and you have to remain focused even though there's nothing going on. 
what I notice about people who are training, they're exercising their body and not realizing that more important than exercising their body at that point is exercising the mind to focus on what they're doing. The key to focusing is allowing ourselves to experience more fully the present environment that we are in. Our body, uh, the equipment that we're using, and the environment that is around us. <laughs> <laughs> A little too much. <laughs> nice. Hi, I'm Paul Swatcha, and um, we're going to be talking about karate today. I'm Chris Swatcha. <laughs> I will Just say your name, okay? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Alright, let's go uh, again. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul Swatcha. And I'm Chris Swatcha. So, oh, I, I practice Rinpokai. It's a Japanese style of karate. It descends from Shotokan karate, which is quite popular. For me, the journey started in karate when I was 11, so it's been about 21 years now. And um, I've always liked it, I've always found it challenging, found it rewarding, found it difficult, I've found it to help me in everyday life and I, I feel it's very fulfilling. <laughs> you can practice all you want, but practice never makes perfect, practice only makes permanent. So if you're practicing something incorrectly, you're only going to get better at doing it continuously incorrectly, if that makes sense. If I'm sparring with people who are higher than me, like much higher, I'm going to have a difficult time. It's going to be challenging. And I'm probably going to be losing more times than winning. But on the other hand, I will be making progress. It won't be noticeable progress. It won't feel like progress because I'll be losing. I'll be get dominated. I will get hit here and there. But overall, the process of improvement will be occurring. I just may not feel it. Winning is awesome too. Like I love winning. Everybody likes winning. You know, it validates what you've been doing. It kind of um, puts in perspective all the things you did well, all the things you did right. But um, you have to keep it in balance. You, you don't want you don't want the winning attitude to take over you and, and you know get out of control. You know, winning is important, but it's not everything. If you want to improve something, whether you know it's writing a poem or, or singing a song or, or whatever it is you do, it's always a process of uh, continuous improvement. And once you think you have it. You actually don't. You have to realize that it's never going to be perfect, but it can always be better. My name is Adrian Cole, and uh, my sport of choice is whitewater kayak slalom. Basically, kayak slalom, you have like a course set out in front of you. There's uh, red gates and green gates. There's generally anywhere from 18 to 22 gates and you gotta get through them as fast as you possibly can. When I'm in my boat, I feel so calm. Um, I'm so comfortable with white water and, and rivers that it's just, it's a happy place. It's a, it's a really calm place. People look at kayaking and sure, you need to be fit, you need to be strong, but a lot of it is, uh, you know, all mental. You don't get to practice the courses before you do a race. All you get to do is look at it and then perform the best of your abilities. Enjoyment doesn't exist outside of discipline. Enjoyment is one of the benefits, one of the consequences of being disciplined. If we had to think about breathing all the time, it would be hard to enjoy the experience of just life and being in a beautiful place because we'd be always thinking about breathing. One of the ways to remove ignorance from karate is to have a good sensei who's essentially got a wealth of experience of, I guess, dispelling his own ignorance, somebody who has done the karate journey for a long time and has worked through the pitfalls of training too. So karate, this hand should be shoulder height. Oh, this so right here. Oh, that here. The eye, eyes, this way. Yeah. Right. My so. coach pushes us. Like he sometimes he comes to the gym and he'll watch us and say, you do more weight, do more weight, do more weight, do more weight, more reps, more reps, you know, more weight. Or on the water, like, you know, just really, he doesn't so much as tell us what to do, but he's giving us advice. Like he's saying, you know, you can try this or try this, like paddle harder here, slow it down here. Um, Reaccelerate there. Someone who is 
tried, tested, and true. Someone who has uh, an integrity to themselves. Someone who truly cares about developing you, not just as a martial artist or, or as someone to attract trophies to the school or what have you, but truly they want to make you a better student in school. They want to make you a better worker you know, in your personal life. They want to make you a better husband, a better brother or sister. They want to make you a better person overall. It's a real shame when we don't get to transfer what we experience in one part of our life to what we experience in another part of our lives. It goes both ways, sport to life, life to sport. it's given me a better quality of life. Um, it's allowed me to push the boundaries of what I think I can do and it's given me a lot of confidence to push my boundaries because I have already overcome obstacles in the past and so I know I can keep pushing what I think is my limit. Well what I take out of my karate and kind of incorporate in my everyday life is one, um, things will not always go the way you want. You are going to lose many more fights than you will win over the course of your entire I guess journey as a martial artist. Like you can work all year and you can end up not quite being there but you know that's just part of growing up like that's just with anything like you're never always going to get rewarded for all the hard work you do but it's all about the lesson that you take from that hard work I find. I think one of the biggest lessons I've learned from climbing is that the will to work hard can overcome anything. All the discipline, all the benefits, physical, mental, you know, spiritual, it's, um, it's something that goes beyond just sport. To me, it's, it's a science, it's an art, it's a discipline. It, it really does transcend just um, a physical competition, winning, winning and losing. Now I understand that I can live a whole life and actually even be more successful than I was. I think that we are intended to experience not just enjoyment, but joy, a deep and profound joy that is intended to connect with the joy of being alive, of being who we are, of being who, being human. I think climbing really allows me to invest a lot of emotion into a project and it allows me to focus on this project and work hard for this project and allow, it, it gives me a lot of satisfaction at the end when I get this project. One of my teammates, she grabbed me and hugged me and was like almost crying, I think. My mom was crying and my, my coach was super ecstatic and everybody was just so happy. You feel like you've grown, like you've discovered something about yourself or rediscovered. It was like just the best feeling in the world to really feel that accomplishment saying, you know, I worked for this, I worked for this, I worked for this and I got it. It's, it's the best feeling. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say.